Hello and welcome everybody, I'm on Prop Bavarian and this is Rising Lords, a game developed here in Germany, in Köln to be specific. It is a small early access game by a small early access studio. I mean, they're not actually an early access studio, but they are a fairly young studio. Argenwood is what they're called, they're founded by two siblings, if I understand that correctly. And this is an interesting game, so I got this game for free, I will disclose this right now. This was uh, sent to me, this is a code that I got for free. This is not a sponsored video, don't confuse this. I haven't actually really talked to the developers in the first place, but I found the game to be interesting. The game is is a 4x game that incorporates stuff from Endless Legend, as well as Civ, as well as uh, Battle for Wesnoth are uh, my sort of, you know, kind of takes there. They also have somewhat similar visuals, and you can see it actually right there, somewhat similar visuals to Battle Brothers if you've played that game. So there's a lot of inspiration to draw from. Obviously this is a game set in the Middle Ages, and there are many, many different ways to approach it. The goal, however, always is to take over the map at the end of the day. So it is a competitive game, either against the AI or against other players. There is multiplayer, you can have the battles, I will show you more on that in a second. So there's multiplayer just for the battles, and then there's multiplayer for the scenarios. And today I kind of want to show off what I like and what I dislike and I'm just going to get it out of the way. I am not a big fan of the font choice in this game. I think the font choice is of course they it was chosen so that it looks somewhat medieval so that it looks somewhat uh, weathered and old and I understand that I completely understand that but I do think that it makes things less legible than they have any right to be. They, they must be very, very legible, of course, in these sort of games because they explain highly sophisticated mechanics and when you get tired of reading it while you're learning those highly sophisticated mechanics, you're not going to have a good time. Now, with that out of the way, because you're going to see this font everywhere and I'm just legitimately not a big fan, let's talk about this. So, these scenarios, and you can edit maps as well yourself, so meaning these scenarios are technically endless if the community creates any good ones, are either very, very small, you can see that right here, four regions only and four players, so that's a very, very filled map. And then we have on the other hand, for example, Colossal Coves, players four and regions 30. So the thing is, I assume that if you play on a map that has 30 regions, we're looking at a position where you play this for multiple hours. You know, the entire victory will uh, be a prolonged ordeal and, and I think it will be quite fine. I know, I've, I've read a bit on the Discord, and I know, by the way, the Discord link, of course, in the description. I know that they decidedly don't enjoy having macro for macro's sake and having micro for micro's sake. They want to have mechanics that truly matter. Meaning that even if you have a gigantic empire, I think the micro will be held to a bit of a, a minimum, you know, as much as it deserves to be there. And we're not going to play on this map, we're going to play on Wessex and Mercia. There it is, Wessex and Mercia, or Mercia and Wessex. We have 11 regions, I think this is like a middling thing, doesn't take all that long. I don't think we're going to, you know, go through an entire game here. I think we're going to have some fun. The settings here, I'm not going to touch those, don't even ask me what they mean. I mean, obviously, you know, there is some obvious stuff here, how the availability looks and whatnot, but at the end of the day, I don't know what that does to the actual difficulty level, and I'm not, I don't think, the right uh, person to ask there. There are a lot of spreadsheets and discussions about balancing in the Discord as well, so if you are getting into this game, which which is available at a cheaper price, by the way, right now than it will be once it actually comes out of Early Access. But if you're interested in this, then definitely go check out the Discord because they are explaining a lot of things there. Now you can make your own person. Look at me, this is Sir Bavarian. I have a falcon that reveals the enemy ha hand when we are in battle. I could get, you know, other items here. You can see there's quite uh, quite the number of items. Wait a minute, these are zero points. Building walls costs increase, who cares? Plus 20 health in region with Lord, negates pestilence and vanishes. Can I move this? What is this even? Why can't I use this? You know what? I don't know, but I'm, I got the book now, okay? TDC to be, to die carefully, maybe. Um, now the way about this is, I'm gonna leave this character the way it is, I also have a deck that influences what my units will get in terms of bonuses that I can hand out when we are in battle. I think I only have access to these, I'm, I'm honestly not all that certain, but I'm just gonna skip the deck building part because I'm just not that good in this aspect of this game because I haven't played it enough. Now with that being said, we need to go back here to Merchant Wessex and let's just jump in and see what this game is all about by actually playing it. So, and here we are. This is the actual map and I will just tell you, I absolutely love the art direction in this game. It is comfy, it is cute, it makes sense, none of it feels out of place. It is very, very much dedicated to the idea of having a medieval flair while still being very, very much kind of cutesy. You know, a, a really neat aspect. I, I think they, they really did a number on this game when it comes to the visuals, when it comes to, you know, the design of what we can see on the map. Uh, on the other hand, I feel like the UI could be a bit 
better for PC users. So essentially what you're seeing here, just for a quick explanation of what this game does and how it works. You saw that map earlier when we chose it and you can see right here the colors green, uh, purple and then brown down here are the other players. They live in different regions and we all of course want to take over the map. Whereas we live down here in Middlesex, we're having a good time uh, right down here in Middlesex. And the way this works is that you need to build up your region. You need to get these building materials. So you have money and then you have all these building materials and then you have weapons. And out of all of those things, you want to of course build an army that you can maintain that doesn't lead to your provinces rebelling against you and that doesn't lead to other players taking over your provinces because you can defend them. Now with that being said, um, I feel, and this is essentially just something about the UI, beyond that I think the game mechanics seem very much fine to me, they actually seem immersive and they seem interesting because they take a, a glance at medieval economies that isn't for example done in Crusader Kings itself because Crusader Kings when you summon people that has, you know, to go to war that doesn't have any impact on your economy in this game, something happens. But more of that in a second of course. Um, the UI feels to me as though it wasn't really designed with a computer in mind. What I mean by that is I think it's fine in theory when you look at it you get all the information but all of this could be smaller, all of this could be uh, a bit of a better placement I guess, you know, this doesn't really give me that much information and instead of a tooltip popping up when I hover over it, this is what pops up and this really strikes me as though I was looking at a mobile game and I mean it's okay I know that there is a very emerging market that says you know what if you have a PC game if you translate it into a mobile market then you can also go from there and I don't think that's a bad choice especially for small developers you need to do that but I do think that this essentially just kind of bashes it into our face but you have this huge empty space that you need to skip with your eyes over if you just had a small tooltip we could have all of that kind of you know in a better order here again I don't know whether this game is also being developed for mobile but I will tell tell you that if it is then I wish that this interface w was kept in the mobile version so to speak uh, otherwise I, I just think that you know essentially this could just be a tooltip or this entire interface could change slightly so that I don't even need to hover and already get all the information that I really want out of it now with that being said what is this game all about how do you actually play it how do you start where do you start what do you do Effectively, what we're looking at is the region of Middlesex only. If we had multiple regions, then right here it would show something else. A different population, a different health, a different happiness. But the way it goes right now, we're looking at Middlesex because this is our only region. And what you do in the winter is you pick up these fools here, these peasants from the city and you assign them to workplaces. You can see right here, these are bushes. If we cleared them, which either requires multiple rounds or many, many peasants at the same time. We get another spot here. I think that would be a farm. And uh, we got two farms already. This is an animal farm. This is a normal farm. Then we got a mine and we got a uh, forestry, right? Yeah, wood cutters, whatever. And all of those peasants will be distributed amongst those places because what we're looking at is the idea of, hey, you know what, we need to make food so that we can sustain ourselves and then later on sustain our armies. We need, uh, obviously we need wood, we need stone, we need metal so that we can build buildings and districts, but more on that building in a second. For the moment, I'm going to drop two people on the farms. I'm going to drop one person here as a farmer. Look at these, look at these super cute animations. Seriously, like the art style in this game is, is great to me. What do you do in the winter here, for example, is you push down um, you know how much wheat is being planted right here that meaning of course that long term you will profit from it you will benefit from it because you're looking at a situation where that can be harvested I think in full and um, beyond that I feel as though you know what I'm not actually quite sure let me see do I want to build anything here we might be able and I might be willing to build a manor. If I build a manor, it's a build time of four, so that's four rounds, or rather four units of worker, meaning it could be two, and then it's only two rounds, or it's one and it is four. Um, I think it would be nice if we built an inn. Oh, but that takes longer, doesn't it? I actually think that's I, I actually think that's alright, right? Is it though? You know what, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it. I can't build everything. You can see, for example, for the town guard, we don't have the cut stone. We can't really use that in any way whatsoever. I'm not going to build a stone castle. I don't really want to build a church. Um, it's not a bad thing, the church, that is, but... You know what, we're just going to go with the inn. I want everybody to be happy, meaning that long term we can use this inn to send people in there, drink and bring up the happiness. The happiness, of course, determines whether people migrate here, etc, etc. I will also do something that I noticed earlier. I'm not going to have any tithe. Nobody needs to pay me in any way whatsoever so that other people all around us may migrate to us. I think that's the dream. And then I'm going to give you the full ration so that, uh, ration so that people will be happy. I will also allow people to eat the cattle so that, you know, well, quite simply, we're looking at a position where... 
everybody's happy, everybody's well fed, you can see happiness will rise after this round, health will rise and the population will climb steeply. So this is essentially my game plan, and I'm gonna drop this guy right here, it's gonna take so many damn turns, but I'm gonna drop him right here, we're gonna make sure that he's constructing that in. And now you can see right here how everything changes, you know, while it is loading, while it is preparing the turns, you can see that the summer is here now, and we even got a merchant arriving that, ooh, look at that, can I, can I click on that guy? No, I can't. But we got a merchant arriving that is very interested in selling us some things, and I might be interested in buying some things, because what I'm thinking about, right, we are building an inn, which is all fine and dandy, but let me just check here. For the smith, oh, we actually have enough cut stone for the smith, I just need wood. So we now have 1167 population, in that case I'm not gonna buy anything from this merchant, he runs over the map and sells many different things, we can also sell things to him, but I think for the moment we are fine, not to worry about it. Look at that, this is what I wanted. These migrants are now coming to us, oatmeal gruel every single day, I'm done with that. Yeah, that sounds about right. Sir Bavarian is a just ruler, yes I am, thank you. I'm going to begin a new life in Middlesex. Sounds like... <laughs> Sounds like a mid midlife crisis, am I right? I'm originally from Essex, well, good to know. I, I know you're from a Essex, it's, it's quite visible, actually. Oh, look at that, Essex actually has a quarry. We do not have a quarry in our territory, meaning that if I didn't have enough stone, I would have to purchase it from the merchant, but if I were to take Essex, well, that would be a different story. See, what I'm looking about is, I can't expand. At no point will I be able to expand into Northampton, because that is a reinforced town center that would be very difficult, but you can also see that uh, all players, essentially, it's me, then it's all of the others here in the north, are pulling away population from Northampton. So Northampton is suffering, but we are all profiting. And then in the next season, we will have 250 more pops, so every 250 pops in a region, you gain one pop worker. And that's essentially what I'm doing here. I'm just building up the economy, making it so that people are migrating here from two provinces at the same time, actually. Oh, actually, three provinces. Look at that. Yeah, all, every single bordering province has people migrating here. Take your pointer off me. Well, that's not too nice. You know what? Can I banish you? Get out of here. This is my land. Hey, no, I don't want to build anything there. You can build castles. I haven't I haven't done that. I don't know. I don't know how it works, I'll be honest with you. But we're not gonna do that for the moment. We're just going to build this in. Going to get one more worker, maybe two. And then we're going to continue uh, building this up. We need more wood for sure, because we don't have any wood right now. Um but I think we're doing quite well. And there you go, you can see we have been catapulted uh, up to 1,410 population. If you go over the population limit, people will still grow. They might start migrating away and stuff, but they will still grow because they feel, you know, good about their chances of living here, but they will spawn in beggars and you don't want to do that, so that is where roleplay sort of comes in. What I'm going to do is I'm just going <laughs> to shorten a couple of things here, make it so that we're not getting that many people uh, to come with us here and to grow in this region. Now this inn is still being built now by two people, so that will just be two turns remaining. I think that is quite excellent. That that should be fine. Uh, we're gonna get to 1,500 population. The inn pops us up to 2,000 as a, a limit. I think we're going to be very, very much fine in our circumstances. Let's just fast forward here, see what we can do. And look at that guy. Now we have one more person than is, strictly speaking, necessary. You can see now in the fall is when we harvest the wheat. We are harvesting 1,100. That's quite the number. I'm actually quite happy about that. In my personal opinion, that's a fine number. And I'm going to send this guy here to cut some wood. He's a forester. He's going to have a good time. Look at these guys. I swear to God, these look so lovely. I really love the art direction of this game. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm, I'm a big, big fan. And boom, there you go, the inn has been built. Now I could place someone in this inn, you can see that gives us some happiness. We don't really need it right now, so like, don't worry about it, you're not gonna go there. Both of you are going to go elsewhere. Let me actually check something. Can I build a smith right now? I cannot. In that case, why don't both of you... I'm just gonna pick you up, and I'm gonna put you down there. Get me some wood. We're gonna build a beautiful smith so that I can, as soon as possible, build a, well, a bit of an army. I think that's the, that would be the dream if we can make that happen. Because if we can take this region here, we have our own quarry, and we'll then be able to do much, much more stuff, at least if I understand this game correctly, which I might not be. Look at that. The construction of your inn has been completed. I knew that, because I was looking at it, but thank you. I appreciate it. You have received 50% less taxes this season. Every now and again, you will get a random event like this one. Poor country. First of all, incredibly rude. We are a, a wealthy people. I mean, if you doubt this, then you are a coward and a fool, and you are not my ally. But I will tell you um, that we're in a pretty decent position. Can't I just build the, the smith right now? Yeah, I can. So that's three rounds if I go and build it with two people. And I think that is what we are going to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull two out of here, put them down there. 
And that's how you shift it back and forth. Again, the farmers essentially just stay where they are. You could pull them off if you're producing more food than you need. I think we are slightly producing more food than we need. Honestly, no, actually. I think we're producing much more food than we need. I'm going to pull one out of here. Yeah, this is fine. We're going we're gonna to lose some food. Um, I believe that we're going to make about 600 wheat. Yeah, no, we're, we're still fine. Like, this is perfectly fine. I don't need to make that much food to begin with. Uh, the red color here shows that we are understaffed, meaning that the 1,200 payout won't actually take place. Now, again, I don't know what the AI is actually doing, but I assume that they're doing roughly the same compared to what I'm doing. Hopefully, I'm doing it better, though. The AI is, the AI is being weak. That's their setting. I'm scared of it. I'll be honest with you. But yeah, okay, let's let's continue here. We're gonna get some more food next turn. We're doing quite all right. We're building this in just two turns. And then we hopefully will be able to build a bit of an army. I will distribute these people around, you know, send them into the mines, which is now that I say it a bit cruel, but I think we'll be all right. Look at that. There it is. Beautiful. All right, and now in this smithy, I can create, I, I can essentially give tasks, right? What is being produced? Do I need to place one in you? Oh yeah, there you go. We have one smith now. How much will you be creating? 30. Okay, okay, I, I understand. So we're gonna have a couple of turns where I just create products in the smithy, and I think... I could upgrade this, but I think we should be focusing here on swords for the moment. Can I do bows and whatnot? Oh yeah, look at that, it just costs wood. Uh, we're gonna make some, some swords, sure. Can I... No, okay, so it's different commands. So yeah, for some turns we're just gonna make some swords that should be alright, and I'm actually gonna place multiple in here and um, that will cost us quite a bunch of resources here but we're just gonna how many do I get if I if I have all of these people in here wait a minute still just 30 are you kidding me oh no it's per person so we're gonna get 90 swords in just one turn that's great and you can uh, why don't you go no why don't you go work in the mines buddy <laughs> have a good time over there and uh, there you go our uh, sadly Middlesex kind of shrunk and because of that we lost the worker I mean I guess that happens uh, everybody else is doing quite all right though we got 60 swords just new and I'm gonna put one of you over here because we need more food. Um, actually, we don't need more food. No, this is a straight up lie. We don't actually need more food. I would like this here to produce... Why don't you produce some bowmen, huh? Okay, and then we're going to have, I think, just one more phase. Maybe more if I need more. I'm gonna... Listen, if I lose that fight, I'm just gonna reload. Don't tell anyone, though, but if I do, then I will reload. We're gonna change this production right now here to forge some heavy armor. Because by forging heavy armor, we're going to get, yeah, a total of 86 potential knights. And I think that will be quite significant. I think, starting in the next turn, I can take out some people that are, you know, working here, that are living in the city. And I should be able to create an army and hopefully take Essex. I mean, people hate it there. They, they told me so themselves. Uh, I'm on my way to Middlesex. I know, I hate Essex. Look at this guy. I like this guy. This is a good one. All right, let's do it. Oh crap, look at that, we got the Blood Brothers of Torn and the Merchant right here. Now, I don't think I'm going to interact with either of those, but what I will do, I'm going to click the army button, and then we're going to take a long look at this stuff. So, what do we have here? These are farmers, we don't want the peasants, they are horrible. My god, uh, these are archers, yeah, that's exactly what I want. Make me 66 archers, that's the maximum that I can have currently. What else can you be? Um, I would like for you, there you go, to be the best swordsman that you can be. We, we lose a worker here if I do this. We lose 40 happiness. Are you kidding me? That's incredible. People will hate us. I guess, you know, that's what conscription is. And this is what I, what I meant, by the way. So, in this game, you actually use up the population in your armies. Meaning that your economy suffers while your men are at war. And I think that's a pretty neat thing. You know, you don't really see that all that often in these games. And, and I really like the idea of it. Now, I am thinking um, I can make some spearmen. Honestly, oh, seems about... Yeah, let's just make 20 spearmen. Yeah, people will hate the crap out of us, but I think we'll be alright. Um, I'm gonna make this army. It costs me a lot of money, I'll be honest with you. I think we have only 80 left afterwards. Yeah, my god, that's expensive, but let's just go. Let's let's do it. Um, I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna call this army. What about we call this army Bavarium Maximum? I don't know whether that makes sense grammatically in Latin. Probably doesn't. Never took Latin, don't worry about it. Sounds cool, though. Bavarium Maximum is on its way, sire. Yeah, that sounds about right. Muster the army. And there you go. 172 people in Bavarium Maximum. And now that we have mustered this army, first of all, obviously, people will uh, not be all that happy about us. 38 in terms of opinion. I'm going to take you guys out. You can have a beer. You worked very well inside of that uh, 
location. And if I zoom out now, you can see that there are merely waypoints that we can go to. So either to the border of this region, to the border of this region, or to the border of that region. So movement is very restricted. You don't have to worry too much about it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go right over here at the end of this turn, and then we're going to march into that land. Um, people are honestly quite happy if I can see that correctly. I think I want to give you normal rations. Sure. We, we can, we have enough food, let's be really. We're gonna do that, we're gonna order the army over there and let's see where it goes. And there you go, I have arrived in Essex in the winter. Is it a good choice? Oh, definitely not. Nobody should ever fight in the winter. How many, how big is your army? Go to battle, let AI battle. I'm, I guess I'm gonna do it, Sir Bavarian versus the people. That's just my everyday life. I always stand against the people. Now the question here is, how does this go? How many troops do they have? Will they destroy me? Let's find out. I don't have a... I don't, I don't know how to feel about that. I don't think that they had a smithy, a smithy, meaning that they should be like peasants and stuff, right? Alright, you can see this is the battlefield. And if you were watchful earlier, this is our literal town right down here. Meaning that we are fighting Endless Legend style in the actual territory that you are fighting in. So that is a thing that happens in this game. I don't know... I don't really know too much about like positioning and stuff. I'm gonna put you in the forest in case there's oh yeah, look at the look at this archer. So like in the forest, I think he's harder to hit. And then I'm gonna ugh. man, bringing 20 units maybe wasn't like that solid a choice. Oh god, are you positioned there? Are you pulling my leg right now? Are you kidding? Okay, this is uh, poor positioning, it feels. And I'm gonna position you with the knights. Honestly, they don't have more troops than we do. Like, we should be fine. I mean, maybe they have, like, a bit more troops, but I, we should be fine, but we aren't. So the first thing you do is you draw cards. You can see charge, add plus 15% damage per tile. Your mounted unit passes when attacking. We don't have any horses, so we don't have any mounted units, so this is a trash card. Shields up, target unit takes only 10% damage from the next ranged attack. Okay. Take aim, initiative minus 100, next attack from target ranged unit deals plus 75% damage. Really, really strong. Take initiative. Target allied unit gets 100 initiative. Interesting. Um, and you see the unit types that this can be used with. I'm just gonna accept these cards. I don't think I have other cards in my deck. I don't know. But what I do know is... Oh god, how much damage are you gonna do here? Wait, what? You just moved? You moved next to my knights? Are you out of your mind? Are you okay? Okay, I would, I would like to... Yeah, attack this guy. Hell yeah! Oh, he can retaliate. Um, I don't like that. But we would be doing much, much less damage against these peasants, and the peasants don't really do much damage against us. So I think I'm going to focus this guy down. Hell yeah, absolutely. Oh, I can shoot at this guy as well. But I think he's in a town and very far away. So it's meaningless. No, no, no. We're going to attack these archers. Go get him, boys. Wait, actually, can I do anything here? Take aim. Next attack from target. See, now I'm, I'm not quite certain. If I use this, does this kill my current move? It does. I wish I hadn't done that, but that's okay. They can retaliate, but uh, don't worry about it, okay? Uh, has taken its turn already. Yeah, let's, let's just attack him. How much damage do they do? Two? Oh, good attack. Good attack, babe. What are you gonna do, huh? Nothing? Oh, he geared up. Something. Oh, he annulled my card effect? Are you kidding me? You are a liar and a thief. And you're in my siege camp. I don't like that. Swap the active unit with target adjacent ally. They burned my siege camp. Are you kidding me? Alright, let, let's kill this guy. Let's kill the archers. Let's get him out of here. You're dead, kid. Alright, look at this. I'm a, I'm a god at fighting. Helpless, poor people trying to defend their town. Doing two damage. Are you out of your mind, brother? Why would you ever attack me? Does this guy ever leave the town? I think he will always guard it. Does it really matter that he just burned the thing? I don't think it does. I, I don't feel like it does. Let's just, let's attack. Let's get him out of here. These peasants have no right to exist. Yeah, teach him a lesson. Oh, look at that. They're just gone. Oh my god. These knights. These knights are amazing. I'm a big fan. Get out of here. Okay, so far so good. Now this guy still sits over there, obviously, and he's not having a good time. I, I'm just gonna, uh, just gonna tell you, I don't think he has a good time. He just exists and uh, just camps out because he knows he can't possibly. Oh god! Hey, you know what? I was wrong. He can retaliate. I'm gonna pull you over here. Can I just pull this guy into the town? All right, I want to attack him. 
from the forest. Get him out of here. What does that mean? What, what did that mean? What What is this? Hello? Game. See, this is what I mean when I... What is this AI... What's this... What's the AI trying to tell me? Is that the entrenched symbol? I don't know what it means. No, don't retreat. Are you drunk? Why would you ever try to do that? Where's he going? What's he doing? Ah! Oh, minus eight. Who cares? I will destroy you, brother. Okay, you just go in here, brother. The troops are fleeing the battlefield? Oh, no. Somebody's fleeing. Oh, I won! Am I a god of gaming? It turns out. <laughs> apparently, when you're attacking a town and you take it, you just win. So, um... God of gaming. I know more than the AI ever knew about this game. Easy. But with that being said, this province, this region, is now under the God Gamer supervision. Now that you've conquered your first region, you can make use of the region overview by clicking the small icon above the minimap. Understood. This game is good. Seriously, this this game is fun. This was this was a lot of fun. All right, look at that. We just conquered this region. We took it over. They they have so much food right here. Don't worry about it. Man, everybody's very unhappy about having been recently conquered, but I think that is okay. We're making mad money as well, so it's not even like... Look at that. I'm paying 17 bucks for this army right here. It's nothing. And our knights in here are absolutely stunningly amazing, so... I'm not too mad about any of this, yeah, and everybody's still migrating into here. Now, the thing about this game is, um, I haven't played enough to, uh, to know, you know, whether the challenge is too easy. We're playing with weak AI because I am a weakling, but also a god gamer. Never forget, never dare forget that. But here's the thing. Is this game worth the asking price? I would say yes. Uh, you've heard about my complaints and my concerns when it comes to the UI, when it comes to the font. But beyond that, I think the game is quite self-explanatory. The game is quite fun. And I would argue that if you pick this up and if you have any friends that play it, or if you join the Discord server of this game company, where you can find people that are interested in this game, that own the game and are willing to play it with you in multiplayer, then you're going to have a very, very long time in this game. Because right now, we can see it even on this map. We just conquered one more territory. Now, imagine if you play it against people that were just as myself, guard gamers, they would probably also be quite quick about expanding, and then you have the clash of the titans, you have coordination, you have intrigue, all of that stuff that we, of course, also know and love from Grand Strategy. So from, from my point of view, honestly, uh, if you like this sort of game, if you like what you see here, this is what you get for that asking price, and in that case, pick it up. But beyond that, uh, I hope that you enjoyed this video, that you learned what this game is, and... Because with that being said, the video ends right here, and I would like to thank the members of the channel that are making videos such as this one possible, namely the Barons, Stefan the Pelted, Achilles, Nohauer, Turner, Falling Phoenix, Jacob, the Murcielago, Dan, Florian, MFV, Mitchell, Aaron, Stefan, and Snywolf, then of course also the Counts, Lachlan, Kazen, Wombat, Thomas, and Shifty, as well as the newest Count member, Rex Romanorum, thank you for becoming a Count, thank you so much, I really appreciate it, see you on Discord, and then of course also the Dukes, Eric, Kiriana, Goodfield, Nathan, Jack, Kenneth, and like so. I can't talk anymore. I hope that you enjoyed this game. I certainly had a fun time. Uh, check it out if you haven't already. The links are all in the description. And I will see you later. Alligator.